Acrisius was the king of the powerful city of Argos. However, he lived in anguish for not having a male heir appointed. In order to cease his anguish, he decided to visit the Oracle of Delphi, but the prophecy he was told only increased his despair. You will never have a son, and no matter where you hide, your destiny is to be killed by your grandson. The king only had one daughter called Danaea. To protect himself from the prophecy, he decided that the princess had to spend her whole life trapped in the palace. Zeus, the lord of the Olympus, hearing the young girl's prayers, fell in love and decided to visit her. The god turned himself into golden rain, and this way managed to get inside through the openings of the tower where the princess was enclosed. The golden rain fell on Danaea's lap, and Zeus impregnated her. Time went by and the child was born. His name was Perseus. Knowing about his grandson's birth, the king Acrisius was furious. He suspected that his brother Protus was the one who impregnated his daughter in order to claim his throne in the future. The king took a drastic measure to punish her daughter's betrayal. He decided to lock the princess and her baby in an urn and throw both into the sea. Gods can't punish me for killing my daughter and my grandson, as I did not kill them. If their destiny is to die in the ocean, I will not do anything to prevent that to happen. However, this was not the destiny conceived by the gods. At the request of Zeus, Poseidon guided the urn to Seraphis, where Perseus and her mother were rescued by Dictes, a fisher and the brother of the king Pelodect. The humble fisherman hosted the mother and raised Perseus as if he was his son. Perseus grew and became a handsome, strong, and brave man. One day there was a party in the palace. Dictes and his protégés were invited for the festivities. The king was enchanted by Danaea, but realized that she was always protected by his jealous son. The moment came when the king was offered with several gifts. The invitees brought him horses and jewels as presents. The turn of Perseus came right after, who was merely a fisher, like his adopted father, and had nothing particularly valuable to offer. I'm not rich, so I don't have horses nor jewels to offer you, but I'd give you the head of the monstrous Medusa if that pleases you. The king, realizing the opportunity to definitely separate Perseus from his mother, says, If what you're saying is true, go after the pesky creature and do not come back here until you bring the monster's head as a trophy. Being the son of Zeus, Perseus always knew that inside of him lied a great power and that his fate was to achieve great things. The hero did not hesitate and achieve the challenge proposed. So Perseus fearlessly took off to meet his destiny. Perseus was given a mission to find the dreadful Gorgon Medusa and bring her head as a trophy. However, the creature's whereabouts were unknown. All he knew is that several brave heroes had gone after the creature and ended up disappearing. Perseus had the help of his half-brothers, the gods Hermes and Athena. The goddess of wisdom offered him her shield as protection, and only the Gree knew the hideout of the nymphs, who had the artifacts needed to accomplish this mission. Hermes worked as his guide. Given that, as the messenger of gods, he was aware of all the routes that led to any destination. The young men arrived at the cave of Gri, who were the primordial deities and relatives of Medusa. There were three old ladies. However, they only had one eye to share between them, so only one of them could see at any given time. Perseus furtively approached the Gri and managed to steal the eye of the creatures. Desperate and blind, they tried to get him without success. The hero said he would give them the eye only if they pointed the right way to reach the guardian nymph of the artifact and the Medusa's hideout. Without any other option, they agreed and told him the whereabouts of both. Perseus gave them the eye and departed to meet the nymph who appeared to be expecting him right from the start. She gave the hero winged sandals quite similar to the ones of Hermes, the helmet of Hades which gave to anyone who wore it the power of invisibility and one special bag where he would have to keep the head of the Medusa. Through the nymph, Perseus found that the Medusa was not always a dreadful creature with serpent-like hair. She once was a beautiful priestess who was cursed for having offended the goddess Athena. 
Due to the curse, those who looked her in the eyes would become a stone statue. Now the hero was heading towards the Medusa's lair. Hermes told him that he would not be able to follow the hero. Instead, he would give him a divine sword made in the forges of Hephaestus. Whilst arriving at the creature's cave, the hero perceived that two other gorgons were guarding the entry. These were Ariali and Stheno, the sisters of Medusa. Wearing the helmet of Hades, Perseus managed to enter the hideout of Medusa without being spotted by her sisters. When entering the spot, Perseus is confronted with countless statues of men who were victims of the creature. The hero was cautious and feared being caught by surprise, having then to face Medusa. Perseus watched the shadow of a creature carrying an arch. She shot an arrow against the hero, who protected himself behind a pillar. Inspired by the goddess Athena, he was able to surpass the fear and focus himself on a way to defeat the creature. The hero realized that the shield he was offered was so polished that it almost resembled a mirror. Using the reflection of the shield, Perseus saw Medusa getting closer to strike him. She launched an attack, but Perseus dodged it and counterattacked by beheading her. Medusa died and from the creature's blood, the winged horse Pegasus and the golden giant Chrysior was born. Without looking at the head of Medusa, Perseus put it inside the special bag that the nymph had offered him. Using the winged sandals, Perseus victoriously headed back home. Perseus defeated the dreaded Medusa and was heading back home carrying the Gorgon's head as a trophy. After traveling for a long time, the hero was tired and finding a nice region, he rested for a while. The place was the Garden of Hesperides, land of the powerful Titan Atlas, where he received the punishment to hold up the sky for the eternity. Perseus demanded to be welcomed with hospitality. I'm Perseus, the son of Zeus, and accountable for the fall of the ominous Medusa. What sort of fool do you think I am? A mere mortal would never manage to defeat the powerful Gorgon. Get out of my domains right now. Perseus felt furious for having his feet ignored, so he removed the head of Medusa from the bag and showed it to Atlas. The powerful Titan, looking at Medusa's eyes, was petrified. The giant Atlas became a giant mountain whilst its peaks were still holding the sky. Nearby in the kingdom of Ethiopia, the arrogant and vain Queen Cassiopeia bragged about the beauty of her daughter Andromeda. The Nereids were beautiful aquatic nymphs known for their indisputable beauty. These felt often by the Queen and demanded from Poseidon a punishment to the city. The god determined that Andromeda would have to deliver as a sacrifice the sea creature Cedo, otherwise the city would be destroyed. To spare the kingdom, Cepheus, the king of Ethiopia, decided to sacrifice his own daughter. Andromeda was chained to the rock nearby the sea and left to her own destiny. Perseus, who was heading back home, crossed paths with such a beautiful woman, chained to the rock and immediately fell in love. But from the sea emerged a horrible creature that appeared to claim his sacrifice. The monster advanced towards Andromeda. Perseus did not step back and decided to confront the creature. Using the winged sandals, Perseus kept diving into the sea, investing with his divine sword against the creature. Due to the spurts of blood and water, the wings of the sandals were flooded, preventing the hero from flying. On the rocks, the struggle continued. Perseus managed to dodge the monster's attacks and readied himself to strike a fatal blow. His technique was perfect. The creature was slain. The city and the princess were saved. As a reward, Perseus received from the king of Ethiopia the hand of the beautiful princess Andromeda. After the marriage, Perseus and his new wife set sail to the island of Seraphis to finish his mission. Perseus had managed to defeat the Gorgon Medusa and saved Princess Andromeda from a terrible sea monster. Now Perseus was heading back home to deliver the Medusa's head to the king Pelidex and reap the praises of his great victory. However, when he arrived at Seraphis, his welcome was not as warm as he had thought it would be. Danaea, Perseus's mother, had been forced to live in the court of the King Pelidex, and there the poor woman was subjected to several sorts of abuse from the king. 
However, with the help of Dictes, the king's brother and the adopted father of Perseus, Danaea escaped from the palace and found refuge in the temple of Athena. Since it was a sacred spot, Perseus's mother was safe from the king's abuse. The news that Perseus had now returned to home reached the king, who summoned all of his guards to defend the palace. Perseus was furious and felt disrespected with the way the king had treated his mother. Due to his new reputation as a hero, it was not hard to gather some allies to face Peladect. Perseus and his allies marched towards the palace. The bloodbath was unavoidable. The king's army was ahead, since it had more soldiers. When Perseus's defeat appeared to be imminent, the hero shouted, Those who are my friends, close your eyes now! Perseus removed the Medusa's head that he had brought with him and petrified all of his enemies. The coward King Peladex was hiding. After finding him kneeling down behind the throne, Perseus said, I will let you live in this palace. However, you will forever keep the coward and pathetic image that I am now seeing. Perseus petrified the king and crowned Dictes, his adopted father, as the new king. Gloriously accomplishing his mission, Perseus returned to the gods the divine artifacts which had been helpful in his victory. He fixated the Medusa's head in the shield of Athena. The reputation of Perseus spread across Greece, and rumors that the great hero would come back to Argos and have his revenge against the grandfather who threw him into the sea along with his mother when he was a baby, started to grow. Fearing the materialization of the prophecy, which said that he would be killed by his grandson, the king Acrisius left the kingdom and ran away to an unknown location. However, Perseus did not plan to have his revenge against his grandfather. Since he was a hero of great reputation, Perseus was consistently invited to partake in festivities and celebratory games to honor the gods. In one of this games, he participated in the discus throwing event. By fate, the hero's throw described a curve and hit a noble man who was watching the games. This old man was Acrisius, his grandfather, who died with the impact. Perseus, even without wanting to, fulfilled the prophecy unveiled by the Oracle of Delphi. The great hero Perseus left his mark on the history of Greece as the founder of the glorious city of Mycenae and gave birth to a noble lineage. Hercules, the greatest hero of all, is among the descendants.